welcome to another up close video. So today's one is for Tonic um, Designer's Choice number 16 and it is the Vibrant Votive Holder. Um, so again it's a, another three dimensional die set but obviously I will show you some ideas of how to use the different dies from the set to create a couple of cards as well. So I've got two of the uh, votives made up to show you in the two different sizes that you can make them and then I've also got two cards that I'll show you as well that I've done a sped up video for and at the end of this video I'll do a construction but also um, as well as it just being a construction I'm also going to show you how you can shorten it because you can make a six sided one or a four sided one but you, you've also got panels that are shorter so I'm going to show you how you can shorten the sides of the votive to make it a short one as well so hopefully that will give you enough sort of inspiration to spark some ideas of um, how you might want to use this set so this is this month's die set So, um, we have got in here, we've got these two pieces, so the hexagon creates your six sided votive, which is the base of it, and then you've also got a square that is your four sided votive, and you also get another square, which is one little size smaller, so it's literally a couple of millimetres all the way around smaller, that you can use as a matte and layer onto here, or you can also use it um, to decorate the side pieces because it is the exact same width as the actual panels that decorate the box. But also, if you got last month's designer's choice, which was also a hexagonal box that it created, you have a hexagon in this one, and so that hexagon, it is a bigger gap between the two sizes than with the squares, but you could um, technically use that hexagon as like a matte and layer to um, cover the base or to add a different colour on the inside as well. And so you'd have the little border around the edge. So I just thought I'd mention that. And you can also see the size difference then between a last month's gift box, which is the smaller one, and this month's, which is the larger one as well. So, as well as those pieces for the base of the box, you've also got this piece, which is the sides of the box. So, you cut it twice for the square or three times for the hexagon. And I love that they've given it to you in a two-panel section. So, it means you've only got to cut it two or three times rather than four or six times, which is great. Um, it's a very similar... Um, <clears throat> mechanism for attaching the bottom of the box to the sides with these little glue tabs at the bottom and I've done it in the same way that I showed you last month by sticking the adhesive onto the hexagon rather onto, rather than onto these little tiny glue tabs but because it has two sides together whereas last month they were single sides so we attached them all to the base first and then brought them up this month because you have two together we're going to attach the whole side length together first and then we're going to put the base on so it's a, just a slightly different construction and also because of the nature of this die set because it is designed um, as a decorative piece that you would put a battery operated candle into it also doesn't have a lid so you can use it as a gift box I think it would be really lovely um, with a load of chocolates in with some bath bombs in um, maybe even like a little get well soon kind of little basket for somebody with like some lem sip capsules or um, sachets in there and like a packet of tissues and stuff like that so I think it's um, a nice little vessel for lots of different gifts so those are the main dies that create the box and then I'll give you an up close look at um, all of the different decorative panels that you've got in here as well. I'll get a piece of card actually to put this on so we can see it a little bit better. So for the main side pieces you have got um, the option basically of using the long side which you've got the actual a piece to cut or you can actually decorate the sides by using this smaller piece that you're you've got two different patterns to go in along with that smaller square that also fits perfectly so those two together basically gives you the exact same shape as just the original outside um, panel to decorate as well so you've got 
different options for mixing and matching the different patterns. They've got around it that way so that you can actually have more options for your patterns. But as well as um, that giving you two extra pattern options or even more, I suppose, if you sort of mix and match the long sides with the shorter sides, you can also just use this piece to create a shorter votive as well. So I'm going to show you that in the construction at the end, how you can actually shorten these sides um, and you know like score them off and create a new glue tab so that just these side pieces will fit on them as well so it's a really nice versatile um, die set this month I'm sure you could extend it to be longer as well and maybe even do like this so then you've got the long panel and the square and extend it to be longer but I'm only going to show you how to shorten it um, in this video but let's also show you the gorgeous different patterns that you've got as well. So to go inside the square, which you could use to decorate the base of the square box or to extend the length of the side panels, um, you've got this beautiful pattern. I really like this pattern. I used this on the or one of the cards that I created and I also used it to cut into pieces little squares of just that little cross pattern. Um, and add them as like little diamond shaped decorations on a card as well but it's got two rows of stitching running down it and then it's got the sort of little cross effects that cut out with a, an embossed diamond in the middle so it kind of gives like a quilted sort of effect and I reckon you could cut that multiple times on a card to make like a long border strip as well then the two designs for the shorter sort of panel that can be added to that you've got this one that's got like a symmetrical design of two sort of daisy-like flowers with a little swirly flourish underneath, a leaf up the centre and a couple of kind of more open flowers at the top there as well. And then you've also got this pattern uh, which has got like more of a larger daisy in there with these sort of like side views or Black Eyed Susan kind of flowers on there as well. So again that's another symmetrical design and you can mix and match these two as well and also these patterns are perfect for your card making as well cutting into the card or um, cutting the aperture and then cutting this into another piece of card and layering it behind as well and I'll show you a card where I have done that and it looks really lovely and then you've also got two options for the long panels as well you uh, are they both symmetrical too no they're not they're asymmetrical but um this gorgeous butterfly one it's got a large butterfly at the top with a little heart, then it's got a side view butterfly and then a smaller butterfly at the bottom in the corner. Again with lots of little flourishy designs. I think this flourish is actually the antennae off that side butterfly as well, really really pretty. And then this one is a gorgeous um, rosy floral design and it's got leafy elements in there, a few swirls and multiple different roses in there too. Um, one of the votives that I made, I think it would have looked really lovely if I had paper pieced in the roses as well. I mean, I, could, I can go back and um, add that paper piecing if I want to, but I think this is a nice one to paper piece. Again, it would be a little bit fiddly, but if you manage to get hold of the Nouveau embellishment tool, um, I don't know if it's going to come back in stock or when it's going to come back in stock, but if you manage to get hold of it, I think it's going to be perfect for placing all those little paper pieced bits back in. And again, the butterfly paper piece would look really lovely too, because it would really make it stand out. So you've got all of those decorative elements to mix and match and um, change up the kind of uh, side panels for the box but you can also mix it up a different way as well on one of mine I've used this panel in the bottom of here then I've used the word die that we get above it and then I have also used this little corner die that we get as well so you really can mix all of these little dies together to build your own side panels as well so the little word that we get it just says smile um, and then you have that little tag that it's sitting inside of and so you can cut both of those dies together and instantly get your little smile tag. But this little rectangle above you can then either use to cut out of a solid colour and mat behind the word smile or you can actually cut that rectangle first and then cut the word smile into it and have a small little sentiment banner as well. Then this other one that I was talking about, you can cut that into the side panels um, just to add some extra little holes because obviously the idea behind a votive is that it's got the kind of lacy design to it so that the light would shine through. So on one of mine I have added vellum to kind of cover the holes but 
still allow light to come through and then on the other two I've actually just left them solid because I think that they can just be used as like a decorative pot or vessel to hold a gift in as well but you can easily cut your design a second time straight into the side panels as well or just cut it straight into the side panels and use it like that but I quite like the layered effect of having the panel on top of the side panel and then being able to see through it and I'll explain how I did that with the vellum as well then you've also got this little flower which has got some beautiful um, debossed design in it like little horseshoes almost going around it which is really lovely and you don't have to run it through with your embossing sandwich to get that detail it just cuts it straight in and then you've also got a, a similar kind of idea with the little debossed detail but it's almost like a little fancy corner piece which you can add you know anywhere on your design I think it would fit quite nicely in that little top yeah it does in the little top um, wiggly edge of the design as well it looks really nice or I'm sure you could actually uh, fold that in half and bend it round like a little corner to, sh to kind of look like it's holding all the bottom bits together as well and then finally we have these two uh, strip dies here which I think are supposed to be handles for the box but I was actually using them or this one in particular as just like a little element on the on my card as well but they're great for little handles you could use this heart as an attaching point um, maybe use this one on the shorter box and this one on the longer or this sorry this one on the square box and this one on the six sided one because it's longer um, but this one also actually has debossed butterflies in the design as well as stitching and it has those little rectangles that cut out so you can weave a ribbon through there as well if you wanted to so I think they're just nice elements that you can use on your cards you can maybe even wrap it around I mean I didn't actually look at this but yeah it would fit nicely across the two panels so you could stick three of these together and have it wrap all the way around um, or with this one I mean probably just two of them would go all the way around uh, which would be really nice so you can mix and match those um, you know however you want to to create a little band that goes around it or just be a decorative uh, feature on a matching card to go with your little um, box as well so that is the the die set from this month this is the vibrant votive holder and now I'll show you a few of the samples that I did so uh, well this is actually what it is supposed to make I didn't actually show you this yet but this is what it is supposed to make and so I've done mine solid this one is solid and I've even lined the inside um, and you'll see why I've used these colors because they match the cards that I've made in my sped up video but I've actually like mixed and matched the panels here like I was just saying how you can use the square then I've used the smile and I've also used that corner piece as well at the top and then I've added I use that little rectangle die and I've added a little bit of specialty card behind the word smile and this was where I thought I could have brought in that same colour and paper pieced in the roses as well I think that would look really nice I might do that I'm not sure if I'm going to be too lazy to do that or not. I need to find a bit more of that card. Or maybe just a similar coloured pearlescent card would work just as well. Um, but I also alternated the panels on these. So because your side panels are two pieces, when you're alternating a design, you can just put the same panel on the same side of the double piece and then the other panel on the other side of the double piece. And then when you attach them all together, you'll get the um, staggered effect where it alternates between the two of them but look at the detail in that rose panel it's really pretty and I really I really love that they've just given you um, lots of different dies so that you can build up your own pattern within um, this design as well and even um, other design other die designs that they've brought out in the past you could like incorporate the lacy borders to kind of go around the bottom of this to give it a different look or um, the die set we had ages ago, one of the first few ones that was like um, strips and one of them had like a circle cut out of the centre, there were some narrow strips in there and I'm sure the decorative detail from those would fit um, in these panels, you could just stop it before the 
um, scalloped portion and just cut um, into the panels like that as well or even if you've got any of the stamp clubs you could just cut these as son solid panels and use your Nouveau products and ink pads and stamps and everything to um, add your own design to these as well if you're just doing them as like a solid pot like this so lots of different options and I just use a specialty paper inside there to line it and then I have also done the square one so if I hold them like this you can see the massive difference in size going from the uh, hexagon one to the square one but this should still be a decent size to put a battery operated tea light in I haven't got one but I have got this little uh, baby pot of uh, glacier paste and that fits in perfectly and I reckon that is about the same size as um, a tea light so um, that should go in there really easily and then for this one I I don't know if you can tell, but you can actually see all the way through this one. I don't know if you're even going to be able to tell, I've got too much light going on it. But you can see all the way through um, with the vellum, on, or maybe you can see like that. Yeah, you can see my finger behind it. So the way I did this one is I cut four panels from gold card, and I cut that beautiful butterfly design into the centre of them. And then I took the same butterfly die, and into my two side panels that I'd cut from craft card, I cut that then into all four of the sides, lining it up as centrally as I could. Then I also took the outside cutting edge for this little panel, and I cut four of them from vellum, you can cut two at a time because it's quite thin um, and then I stuck the vellum to the back of the gold die cut panel then I held it up to the light, oh yeah you can see you can see nicely through that now I held it up to the light and then stuck the gold panel onto the craft card because um, the designs will line up really nicely then because you've cut them into both and then it means because you've hidden the vellum behind this gold panel that from the inside you've just got the back of the die cut card rather than having a piece of vellum showing with um, glue around the edges so it just makes it a little bit neater for the inside um, this pattern isn't symmetrical but if you had maybe um, used the square with either one of the smaller patterns on top you might even be able to have cut a second panel and hidden the um, inside as well if you want to and have it as like three layers I mean it's really sturdy just as those um, two layers on there even though we've cut the detail out but you could also if you used a symmetrical design line the inside too so that is the two of them that I have made and then the cards that I have done which will be in the sped up video are these two cards so you can see why I chose uh, this colour scheme for the votive because I thought they go nicely together the votive says smile on this card says smile on um, so I've done them so they're kind of like a matching set which I like to do so I have done this one where I have used the long side panel and the short side panel um, and I've hidden the join there so you can't really tell and I've cut the apertures into my white piece of card that I put on the front of my card and then I've cut the detail um, into two separate pieces of card, just a dark brown card and then you can just line them both up behind there so you've got the detail. I use that other specialty card behind that then so it shows through but you could equally make that a shaker as well, really easy to do it as a shaker. Um, I just make shaker cards a lot so sometimes I want to mix it up and not do a shaker. Um, and then to go across this centrepiece, that is that um, handle kind of die and all I did was snip that off straight there just to get rid of this piece and then it just looks like a lovely little lacy border and then I've used that to mount the little smile sentiment on where I have cut that small rectangle first and then cut the sentiment inside of it and then this, these are um, the bits I was talking about where you can take this pattern and snip it into little squares and then use them as decorative elements on there too and the Nouveau drop that I've used on here is the Calming Aqua I just thought it went really nicely with the card colour that I'd used. So that is the first card. And then the second card, I just love this lattice design so much. So what I did was I took the smaller square die and I cut five apertures into this card using it as a diamond shape. And then I just cut um, two from a minty colour of card and two, oh yeah, two from a dark brown colour of card. I just realised I've put those 
different ways around but that actually works that 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 uh, the stitching on that one goes that way but these two stitchings go this way but I've done both of those the same anyway I just noticed that on the camera but um I think it looks really nice just having it poking through the aperture and all you do is trim the design down so it's a little bit smaller you could have just used the um, larger square die to trim that out as well if you want to and then you can just put a tiny bit of glue behind the aperture and stick it behind and then I've also put some of that specialty card behind the aqua coloured ones and some of the aqua card behind the dark brown ones and I've raised it up on foam as well just so that it gives a little bit of a shadow um, I really like that kind of a look and then I'd also, as well as cutting the diamond apertures out, I'd cut some flower apertures out and so then I had the white flowers so I offset the flowers and stuck them back in and then used the Nouveau Drops on the top of that too and then the sentiment is just a Will's Hand sentiment. I don't think they make them anymore but I'm sure a lot of you uh, will already have those um, in your stash as well or any kind of sentiment will work really nicely. That's the quite nice thing about... Um, taking a 3D box die and turning it into cards is that it makes you dig through your stash to find something to work with it you know to work as a sentiment and stuff so I think that really sort of gets your imagination going so those are the two cards that I've done and then that is the square votive and that is the hexagonal one so you can see all of those examples and then I have cut everything ready out of purple and silver and grey because I love this colour scheme and I want to show you how to assemble one it's really really easy but also show you how to shorten the sides like this as well so what I did was I cut all of my panels you can see I've alternated the design and what I was saying about um, because it's got a two panel design you keep this design on one side of the two panels and this design on the other side of the two panels and then when you stick them all together you actually get them alternating across which is what you wanted so it just makes it much easier then to do this and create this smaller panel what you do is you put this on your scoreboard you can butt it up I'm just using the centimetre side because that's what I scored in but you want to butt it up to the top with that straight edge and to the top of these scallops over here and then just look at what height you want it to be how far away from the bottom of this panel do you want it to be you could I, I mean I scored this at four centimeters but if you had scored it at five or even six you could have then filled in this gap with that little smile sentiment or you could um, get nouveau drops and do a, a line of nouveau drops or you could put gemstones on there or something as well if you wanted to make it slightly longer but I just went for four centimeters so it comes just underneath these decorative panels that I've done and that I've already stuck on there so that's how I got that size measure measurement then you need um, to replace this glue tab at the bottom and this is a very tiny skinny glue tab but it doesn't matter what size we make this glue tab so we can actually just make it a little bit bigger so all you want to do is literally just chop it off and give yourself whatever size glue tab you want then I'm just going to take some smaller scissors to make it easier and then you want to trim a glue tab so if you look at the glue tab you've got this diagonal piece here then you've got this triangle cut in and then you've got a diagonal here but also a diagonal on the end of the other glue tab that I'd already put adhesive on as well so that's what we need to cut into this one so we can do that triangle and then oh actually we need to go this triangle this triangle and then we can cut a V shape out of there so we've mimicked what we just cut off the bottom basically okay so we've got that now that one I've already folded so for this obviously you just fold all the score lines and that little glue tab fold the bottom glue tabs that we just created and then same on this one the card I've used not, is, isn't too thick so I don't really need to crease it with my uh, card creaser but you can if you've used a thicker cardstock. Then all we want to do is stick all of these together. So I'm going to take the backing off of there and we're just going to do what we usually do with any construction where you're just lining up this cut line to the fold line off the glue tab and we're just making sure that the bottoms line up. 
and we just press that in place. Then we want to do the next one, so we've got a continuous strip, because remember it's a slightly different construction from the previous box from last month, because we've actually got two panels stuck together rather than just a single panel each time. So now we've got our whole uh, piece like this, we then want to start adding this to the base. So for the base of this box, um, I have got two bases like this. This one I've stuck tape uh, more around the perimeter because this is what I want these glue tabs to stick to. Um, it doesn't matter so much because we've made our own glue tabs here, but on the original the glue tab is really skinny and I know not everybody has 3mm red liner tape, so I just find um, it's also just easier, less fiddly, to put a wider tape on the base of the box and then stick that tiny flap to the wider tape on there as well. So I've done one like that and then the other one I've just added tape all over because we'll add a bit of glue onto this as well and we'll also trim this down slightly before we put it in which I'll show you. It's probably not so necessary for this shorter one but for the longer one it makes it a lot easier if the inside base is slightly smaller than the outside base so it can slide down inside easier. So all I want to do is then just take the backing off of all of these pieces on this bottom piece and then we can just start going around the box so you just want to take the cut line of the edge of the hexagon and line it up against the fold line that we created ourselves and this works with this um, little votive because the sides of the box are completely straight. If you're trying to shorten or lengthen something that tapers it gets more difficult because you've got to change the size of the base of the box but with this one the sides of it are completely straight so it's really easy to change the height of it. So then we just want to follow that all the way around. I did actually use, um, you can see, a grey base, even though I've used purple sides, mostly because I've been trying to use up some of the sheets of card that are in my sort of scrap pile. Um, but also I thought it was just a nice contrast as well to use a different coloured um, base to the sides of the box. I do like to do that sometimes. So, And then that one. Then when you get to the last side, you've got to tuck this glue tab in but you've also got to stick it together as well so I tend to take the tape off the glue tab push this glue tab up so it's not going to catch on that tape where we don't want it and then we're just focusing on this side glue tab so if we get that into position lining it up as we did with the previous two when we put them together and then you can just press that glue tab down inside so you've now got all the glue tabs sticking down and it doesn't matter that we can see that excess uh, tape because we're going to put another base inside. So for this base, for this small one, no, I think, well, we probably could just take the backing off of that and place it inside. But I wanted to show you how I did it for the taller one in case you struggle getting the second base inside there. And the reason why you want to... Put, you don't have to put the second base, but if you want to uh, put that inside there, it just basically sandwiches those glue tabs between two pieces of card, so it just kind of reinforces the base of it, and hopefully will just make it stronger for whatever you're going to put in there. So, let's take the backing off of this. I'm also going to put... Oh no, I need to cut it first. Whoops. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's the piece I just took off. Okay, before we take the tape off, long pair of scissors, long bladed, that's got other card on it, long bladed pair of scissors, and then with the die, you can see it puts this like debossed line around the edge. If you cut right at that line, I think it would be too much, especially for this small one, we'd be able to see it. So we're trying to aim to cut halfway between the edge of the card and the line, just to make it a teensy bit smaller. So we're basically just doing that. I don't know if you can see. I think you can. So we're literally just going to cut that much off all the way around just to make it a tiny bit smaller so that if you were making a taller one it would easily slip down inside. The square one didn't seem to be a problem because you can actually just rest the square against the side of it and then push it over but when you're using a hexagon you can't do that. You have to kind of drop it down like... Um, 
horizontally so that it will sit down flat. So we've just trimmed off those small little edges, now we can take the backing tape off. You don't have to use this much adhesive either, I just, you know, it's just habit to make sure it's going to stay stuck well. And then, when we've done that, we can also put a little bit of glue, um, just to make sure it sort of catches the glue tabs in there. So we can just run a little bit of glue around the edges. Just like that. And then we should easily be able to place that inside and then you can see because we cut that tiny sliver off it's just made it so we can easily get that inside and then with this one you can easily press that down because it's a shorter sided one but if you can't reach down inside enough this curved end of the glide folder is really great just for like pushing down the base of a box and getting all of the tape to make contact so and that is how easy it is to make this month's designer's choice. And obviously you could have lined the inside again, like I had with this one. Depends on what kind of look you're going for. But I mean, you could give um, crafting products in here as well. You know, it doesn't have to just be um, gifts for like your average person. Why not treat a crafter to something and make the gift box and then put some lovely crafty goodies in there. I mean, small ink pads would fit in here quite nicely. I mean, you can probably get three. Three little small ink pads fit in there really nicely. I mean, if you make the square one, I mean, I'm not sure, maybe three or four. Definitely three will fit height-wise in there. Uh, but you could probably get a fourth one in there too. So even like, that's um, a Nouveau Shimmer Powder, fits in there really nicely. Or one of the little bottles of confetti fits in there really nice. Or like I said, the mini um, glimmer pastes and mousses and stuff that we get. Or a vintage drop as well. That will fit really nicely in there. So, you know, lots of different things uh, should be able to fit in this as well for different kind of gift ideas. Even just to make your desk look pretty. Like, that's my Nouveau stamp cleaning solution. Doesn't that look just look way prettier than seeing the bottle? You can just make cute little covers for all of your um, bottles that you have out on your desk. I don't know about glue don't know if that would fit. Oh, it would. So you could actually make the square one to house your glue in there as well. And if you did have a fine tip bottle too, oh, it wouldn't quite fit. It would just sort of poke out the top. But yeah, so loads of different ideas of what you might want to put inside these or gifts that you might want to give as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this up close video with a little construction of how to put one together. They are just, they're really simple to put together. So, um, you know, just have a go. Make one out of white card first if you want to, or scrap card. Maybe you've done some um, background making that you're not keen on. Just, you know, cut it up, use it to make a, a, a template kind of one to check that you can put it together and everything. So I hope you enjoyed this up close video. And the links to this designer's choice die set will be in the description box below the video and also on my blog as well. Um, and the the links that I use are affiliate links, so if you have ever used one or uh, do click on one and purchase something, whether it's what I've linked to or whether it's something completely different, I will get a small commission from it and I really, really do appreciate you using them. I've said this um, in the last few videos, but I just wanted to really show you how much I do really appreciate you using them. I say it in the description of all my videos, but I don't always actually verbally say it. So hopefully everybody who's used them will now have heard me properly thank them for using them. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again in the next video. Bye! <laughs>